Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and I'm joined, as always, by... The Adam Glass. Hey, we're, we're timing that better. This week we have a special guest as we talk about Michael Bay's 1999 classic Armageddon. <laughs> uh, my roommate, uh, Stephen Goldmeyer, is joining us. Say hello, Stephen. Hello. Hello. Um, you've got, you're, now, you're now speaking to at least dozens of... I, I don't think that's um, true. <laughs> like, tens, singles maybe. of listeners. Well. No, let's not let's not self deprecate at this point. This is episode number forty, uh, and while we are recording, at this these point we probably have advance, at least a couple we might, people. We listening, might have yeah. a couple people listening. Well, it's an honor either way, <laughs> no matter how many people are listening. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, it's, a, it's an honor to well, have. He's you, he's good at this. <laughs> I try. As I said, we were talking about Armageddon Hudson this Hawk. week. No, not Hudson <laughs> Hawk. Hudson Hawk. <clears throat> if Hudson Hawk were in the Criterion Collection, it would deserve it more than Armageddon. But and you know what would probably be the biggest movie celebration that we have? We, would, <laughs> we just invite all of our friends to participate. <laughs> Everyone watch Hudson Hawk with us. Um, this is uh, Michael Bay's third film after Bad Boys and The Rock. The Rock is also inexplicably uh, a Criterion release. <laughs> the Rock might uh, I will say it that it's more, more explicably yeah. a Criterion yeah. release than this one, because at least it has one of my favorite Nicolas Cage performances. Right. Yes, yes, The Rock. I think I said this was 1999. It's actually 1998. I misspoke. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah we'll get this emails is, about that. Okay, so... The, I I don't know what qualifies with the criteria. I, I thought I either. I thought I understood <laughs> it, 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 what the criterion collection movie. was. I, I really thought I understood what it was. You know, classics it, of is world this, cinema. Is this somebody's last film? Um, I don't know. This I asked is, because we get we had one other one that we figured was because it was his last film. I can't remember mm. what that was, but. Um, you know what I mean, right? It was like a visual yeah. sub- effects guy or something like that, wasn't it? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, and I we think figured right. that we pro- it was probably in there because it was his um, last. I think this. I think this might be Mark Curry, uh, Mr. Cooper's uh, <laughs> only movie role. So maybe <laughs> that's why it's be I, know, I, was, I thought the same thing when I saw him. I was like, oh, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> Are we going to hang later, Mr. Cooper? Turns out oh. the answer to that was no, because Mr. Cooper does no. not get a lot of screen time in this film. <laughs> yeah, he no. disappears. He's, uh, well, those those crazy, touchy Asians uh, probably dragged him off to Saks Fifth Avenue as it was burning. <laughs> they wanted um, to go shopping. <laughs> that, woman, that woman who, we, as, I, I as the street is exploding shopping. around her, uh, grabbed grabbed the taxi driver's shoulder to tell him that he she wanted to go shopping. This, this this movie is a mess. Right, okay. sure it let's, is. It is awful. Let's, let's we introduce the characters, then then dispose of them randomly. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Griffin. We have a storyline that yeah. in that New York scene, Eddie Griffin and 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 Mark Curry essentially have the same role: uh, African American yes. comedic relief characters. In, in other it's like they couldn't decide which one they right. wanted. Yeah. It's like they wrote yeah. two scenes, and as is Michael Bay's want, he said, <laughs> all right, we'll just put both in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Well, the whole movie kind of feels that <laughs> yeah. way. It's like, okay, who can we get for this film? We can get one of the Wilsons, and we can get Bruce Willis, and Ben Affleck. Oh, hell yeah, we'll just add more roles. Yep. Everybody. Everybody's in this movie. Charlton Heston does the narration. It's... A, this movie has a ridiculous cast. Well, and, and obviously um, it's getting ahead of us a little bit, but uh, uh, you know that that's does Charlton Heston do the narration? Yes, yeah. The opening really narration good. is Charlton Heston. It really it's is true. I thought it was just somebody who sounded no, like Charlton. it was no. Charlton Heston. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's Michael wild. Bay takes the same approach with uh, his plot and his uh, and his uh, um, <laughs> yes. his visual effects as well. That he thinks, what's something yeah. cool I could do? And then, what are the inexplicable things I have to do to explain sort of why it's <laughs> yeah. happening? And then just yes. does it anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the entire opening scene yes. is basically just one of those. He's like, well, "Man, check out this awesome three D model of the Earth I found." Right. While I was surfing yeah. the internet. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> of uh, course this is way pre that, but 
still. <laughs> Back to the justification, I suppose. On the Criterion website, they have some of the essays. Uh, there is only one essay for for Armageddon, and uh, <laughs> I don't. I think it probably goes without saying that the comment section on the Armageddon page on on the Criterion website is one of the. Uh, one of the longest I've seen. <laughs> um, it's, it, does it devolve kind of into YouTube? Um, it's it's YouTube esque. They're actually the the top because they're they're I think they're they're formatted by most recent, and the top ones I think it devolved into an argument over whether or not, uh, uh, <laughs> what's his face Ebert, Roger Ebert is is a, an authority to be. Uh, bowed to, I guess, mm. because R- Ebert hates this movie. But obviously it's in the Criterion Collection, so it can't be that bad, because we all respect the Criterion Collection. No, it, it, it can be that Turns bad. Turns out it, it can, bad. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the essay, though, is actually written by Michael Bay's uh, freshman in college uh, film professor. <laughs> what? Um, Are you kidding? I am not. I am not. That's wild. So it's it's basically talking about um, how it's such a. I would well, like let's, okay. let's, this this first. Be, despite what you may have heard, Armageddon is a work of art by a cutting edge artist who is a master of movement, light, color, and shape, and also of chaos, razzle dazzle, yeah, and explosion. You, you know what? Who's you know who else is a is a master of light, color, and shape? My two-year-old right. son, <laughs> and probably also chaos, and uh... yeah, yeah. He picked up those skills <laughs> at a pretty normal age. He knows his shapes, his colors, right. knows the sound of my <laughs> voice. I don't know if Michael Bay knows the sound of your voice. Fun fact: while doubt he, he does, while he hates he this. Will. There is an attraction at Euro Disney based on the movie. Man. Oh, I want to see because that. Of, because yeah, but, okay, of course come there on. is. It's Euro I'm Disney. I'm betting the Euro Disney because attraction Euro Disney. is better than this movie. What would they do? It's, do you think uh, it's like one of the, like the old Star Wars one where you just ride in a, in a car thing that a, like, shows something on the screen? It's apparently based on the part of the film where the space station is destroyed. Um, That's, oh, really? You know what? Yeah. my only The only character I like in the film. Yes. Yeah, that Russian is definitely the... The Russian the guy. The Stormare, yeah. yeah. Peter Stormare is a great. He's he's great in the movie. I like Owen Wilson's character in Me this too. movie too, even though he doesn't. Oh uh, yeah, I do too. He doesn't yeah, get sorry. any do screen like time. He's just he, he's, he's there. Gets, he's very too. Owen Wilsony for the very short yeah. amount of time that he's on screen. <laughs> well, and and I don't know where that fits into the pantheon of Owen Wilson films. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of before I started to hate Owen Wilson. Yeah, yeah. I think it's because it's. Very Owen Wilson y rather than yeah. just uh, Owen Wilson doing a caricature of Owen Wilson. Right. It's just Owen Wilson. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and that's um, when people, I, I've told people that I'm going to be doing this, talking to you guys about this film, and, uh, and explaining that it's because it's one of the Criterion Collection. And people do ask that obvious question why is Armageddon in the Criterion Collection? So I've, I've thought up a number of justifications. And just from the standpoint of like having watched a lot of science fiction movies, Michael Bay has kind of created the grammar for giant action movies. Even the ones we consider good are pretty influenced by like Transformers and stuff like that. So um, you could see Armageddon as the seed that germinates into the grammar of modern giant action sci-fi movies. I think and you have I a good point there. I wonder if I'm just... Yeah, I think you do, you do too. I, I think possibly I'm not mentally equipped to deal with giant... <laughs> High budget action <laughs> science fiction, because my favorite uh, science fiction films are all exceedingly totally low budget. From that, oh. yeah. Well, not necessarily. I mean, there's Kubrick and stuff right. like that, but I mean, yeah. that that slow, steady, yeah, science sure. fiction, not as flashy. Not, not yeah. I hate Transformers, right? Because I'm apparently 85 years old and it gives me a headache. Uh, to be fair, I hate Transformers too. That's not, I, 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 but it, this also became like uh, um, uh, Cloverfield has the seeds of Michael Bay in it somewhere, and I, right. I also like Cloverfield yeah. a lot. So, you know. yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. I think you're probably that may be the reason it's in here. It's the only one I can think of. <laughs> Maybe maybe the fact though on on the note of Cloverfield that it was co-written by J.J. J. Abrams uh-huh. gave it some points. Right. 
the Criterion wanted to do something <laughs> to, had to, get to J. honor J.J. Abrams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or any of his other, I mean, he didn't have any films when Criterion probably started collecting yeah. stuff together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, they obviously, they're always adding well, new right, things, right. But, but I don't know that J.J. J. Abrams gets anything else in here. Mm. Um, but yeah. It's... We'll just have to wait until number 600 to find <laughs> out. <laughs> We'll get we'll get through the list. This is number forty of of, of our six hundred. By the it's way, not bad. <laughs> it's not Which is bad. more than we expected Which, to be able to accomplish. The, the weird thing is, since the numbers are based on DVD release, that means that basically this came out on a Criterion DVD as soon as the movie came out on DVD. Mm. Yes, it seems like it. I, there is a regular version, but it seems like the Criterion release was basically the release. Yeah. Interesting. Which is um, weird. It's really wild. I don't know a lot about um, the the sort of intellectual property politics uh, of, of the Criterion Collection. Is there any possibility that somebody, the production company somewhere, said, the only way we're going to get a real DVD release of this film that has the bonuses we want is to basically partner up with Criterion? So, like, I... It's, it is possible. It is possible that they wanted that supplemental stuff made available immediately. So, well, and since this was pretty early in DVD releases, yeah. it's quite possible that this was right. just the best company to go with to get a real DVD. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't were, seem to It was me, real early. Yeah. It doesn't seem to me, though, that Criterion takes submissions like that. Right. <laughs> um, no, yeah. but, you know, I that mean, is, there, was probably, a, there could have been backroom yeah. deals or something. Sure. That it's a, cura- it's, it's a cura- curated uh, collection, not, not necessarily just a... Or whatever, right? But which makes it just all the more baffling. Right. Yeah. But you do you do make a good point about this affecting the grammar of of movies after it, and and certainly the special effects, the heavy special effects scenes in this movie are impressive. Mm-hmm. When cities are blowing up, that's the best. Yeah, it's especially impressive. Cinematically, it's the, the best time period yeah. that this is that this was made. Yeah. Nineteen ninety nine. That's very very good for nineteen ninety nine. That's it's extremely it good for nineteen ninety nine. Yes. Uh, New York blowing up, Paris blowing up. Is you know, within the uh, within the plot of the movie, there's problems with it. But <laughs> but looking at oh, it, oh well, I mean, if yeah. we're gonna talk about plot, <laughs> we can... then we just have to talk about plot, <laughs> and just everybody, you know, tighten your right. bootstraps, okay? <laughs> Buckle yeah. Buckle up. Um, what did you say pucker? Oh, pucker or the... something like that at the beginning. Pucker up. Pucker up. Pucker up. Pucker up. <laughs> Pucker up, one of the guys at NASA says. Pucker up. Uh, so pucker up. This is just so... Uh, there's so much... God, we're... Okay, yeah. well, first of all, Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> Let's just clear this out of the way right now. Billy Bob Thornton, head of NASA. Billy Bob Thornton, Do I need head, to say NASA, a lot about head of NASA with a leg brace. Do we get why he has the leg brace, Probably. or is it just supposed to be subtle? It's just a gimmick to keep him out of space. <clears throat> yeah, that's, I mean, obviously, yes, but do they state that it's, that it's keeping him out of space? Yes, he Very says, I joined the engineering because of, because of his leg. For obvious reasons. Right. Oh, okay, and then we see his leg. And oh, they keep okay. showing his leg, and it's about yeah. the only time we actually see I was going to say, that is the yeah. only scene where we see that, that leg brace. And there are so yeah. many things in this movie that only matter for one scene. Happen yeah. for one, yeah, one second. And that, it reminds well, me... Like, yeah. Mr. Cooper yeah. is... Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me it of reminds The Room, me. if you if you guys have seen uh, Tommy <laughs> yes, the Room. Yes, The Room, yes. Uh, there are so many things that happen in just one scene, and that seem critically important for just one scene and then you know by the end well, of the movie when they yeah. would be relevant aren't coming back again yeah well it reminds me it seems like this movie is a really high budget film to be doing this but breaks the what, what's the name of the rule if there's a, gun, yeah. a shotgun Check on the wall gun. it's going to go off before yeah yeah nothing it's going to go off before the end yeah it's this just, film is full yeah. of things like right. that it's uninterested in its own continuity it's absolutely true <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, so and like the leg brace comes up as an explanation of why he's not in space, and then is discarded. Yeah, not relevant, <laughs> not important. Yeah, he's not in space, and that's all we need to uh, need to care about. Right, um, but why? But do we don't even need to care about in the first it. place. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's irrelevant, and we don't need. Yeah, Billy Bob we Thornton. Bum- Billy Bob Thornton lis- l- wishing listfully that he could be up there isn't something that plays into the movie. Right. Right. So we and don't need for, to know that yeah. he can't be up there. Yeah, we're bombarded by information that is not relevant. <laughs> yeah. And and the when we're not getting a whole lot of information that would be relevant. There's barely any exposition on in this movie. 
Um, our, all of our main characters are introduced in a 60-second montage of the FBI picking them up. Which, oh, God. which at least effectively demonstrates their character right. in what they're doing and how they're picked up, but only because they're paper thin characters. Uh, well, and, we're, and they're all basically the same character. Partially true. No. Yeah. We have yeah. we have three, <laughs> at least three of them, are picked up, and respond almost identically. And. Though Steve, Everybody's Steve just Buscemi a at that guy. point was a great was a great that was one of my favorite lines of the movie where where the FBI taps on his shoulder and says you know FBI he says no thanks <laughs> that yeah was, that was actually funny but uh, there there's moments of humor I can't there's moments no, of the great special is effects not. there's moments of great humor but as a collective whole it is such a mess well, of a it's, movie it's 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 the problem is not necessarily the writing of the dialogue. The punch up is done fairly well. Yeah. It's more that the actual story is batshit right. insane. <laughs> yeah, the, the the dialogue is in service of this this shambles of a plot that doesn't make any sense. So yeah. you know the fact that from yeah. moment to moment we understand what everyone's talking about doesn't mean we care about you know. I was I was yeah. ranting. <laughs> right. Yeah. I understand yeah. when like mental patients speak gibberish, but yeah. it doesn't mean they mean anything. I was ranting yeah. about this in the dining room after we finished watching uh, the movie that. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it, nothing. No one changes in this film. Nobody like has yeah. a realization. If you tried to map this onto like Dan Harmon's story circle or the hero's journey, there's there's nothing here. You know, Bruce Willis starts out as a great driller who loves his daughter and sees Ben Affleck <laughs> yeah. like, as a son, and finishes as a great hero who's a great driller who loves his daughter and thinks of Ben Affleck as a son. There's yeah. no nobody changes, and that's yeah. His heroic sacrifice doesn't doesn't. It has no meaning. Necessitate it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't necessitate change a change of character. Right. It has no meaning. It has no point. He would have he would have at the beginning of the film done an identical Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. There is one yeah, char- there is one character who has some sort of change, and that's the his sort of number two. I can't remember the actor's name. I can't even remember the character's name. But he's got the son who he tries to go visit and the ex wife or girlfriend, we don't get that information <laughs> except that there's a court order that he can't be there. Um <clears throat> tells the kid that which, he's a salesman. Which is really the only piece of information I found myself wanting to know. Yeah, yeah. I was, why can't he be right. there? Like, what did he do? What was the context? Yeah. That she forgived him so easily because yeah. if he was like horrible, right. even if he's on TV, <laughs> yes. I mean, he shouldn't be forgiven. Even 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 if he, you know, if he beats her every night and is a drunk, but he saves the world, that doesn't necessarily make he's him He's still a, a man who right. beats her every night and is a drunk. Sure that yeah. astronaut woman who slept on a diaper and went to go try and kill her ex-lover. Um, just yeah. because she was an astronaut, everybody wasn't like, well, we can forgive her crimes. She was an astronaut. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Even if you're proliferally uh, involved with, with saving the right. world... It doesn't necessarily make you. You might still beat your. Yeah, it doesn't make you suddenly a good dad. It's like, and that little boy is super excited that the salesman is now his daddy. After Um, what what could only have been like only three conversations with his mother. Yeah, Yeah, and like maybe two days, and then like throw in the fact that like, it. What did she do to that child? The child is how old? Eight, nine, (laughs) ten. I would maybe six. I, I, I was thinking remember. six. I, I was thinking six. Six. I don't know. I'm never sure with child yeah. actors. Um, <laughs> I was thinking. But under either six, way, but... she's just more permanently traumatized that child. Yeah. She has introduced yeah. the concept of a father out of nowhere. <laughs> yes. Well, right. yeah. I wouldn't I have been know. surprised There's... if the kid was like, "What's a dad?" <laughs> well, <Yeah>. son. <laughs> yeah, five minutes of exposition right. that doesn't mean well, anything. In the I also think it's worth pointing out for your listeners that this this whole thing about uh, him, this this little boy, started as a discussion of something we liked about the movie, like the the very yeah. the moment of like actually believable pathos that we got out of that that uh, that other yeah, astronaut. And it's, it's thin. It's right. very it's still fairly less. believable pathos, but <laughs> yeah. So here's my favorite part of the film. Okay, leaving on a jet plane. <laughs> Everyone singing terribly. Yes, um, it's atrocious. It is absolutely. In the previous atrocious. movie we watched, we talked about how much we love the soundtrack. Yeah, that's one of the and, worst and the random scene because there were there were musical aspects to to uh, that worked Tokyo very Jordan well. That we just mm. talked about. 
that worked very well. Um, well, that's that's one thing. One thing I was thinking about is all of the all of the quick cuts and the and the the jumping and the the disregard for its own internal continuity. Um, Branded to Kill has all of that, mm-hmm. but Branded to Kill to Kill um, still manages to be a decent movie. We didn't love it. It's not great, but yeah, it's but decent. it's something that had influence. Mm-hmm. And this, this has is, had influence this is... too. So I'm thinking, in 40 years, are we going to look back at Armageddon and realize how important it was? Nope. Mm, I really don't no. think so. <laughs> well, but the difference is, is that the people of the time when that movie, when Branded to Kill came out, within 10, pe- 10 years, people were treating it as yeah, people a within... severe, a seriously influential film. There's it. It has been more than 10 years since this film came out. And there's nobody. Wa- there's n- don't think other than his former film professor. Anyone walking around talking about how astoundingly influential and important this film right. is. Yeah. Well, so it's that true. means probably it's never going to happen unless humanity is wiped out. The cockroaches evolve, take over the world, find this, I like Armageddon. watch it, and think, ah, oh, this is. Well, maybe if if History. that happens, if that happens, they'll think that's an accurate recording of, of how the world ended. what happened, <laughs> of what what actually <laughs> Doc, docudrama of, of the yeah, end of the world. Historical yeah. document. Well, since you guys are on the subject of the things that you liked the most from the movie, um, yeah, my my the thing that I loved the most was uh, 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 the uh, the leader of the NASA mission. Uh, when Steve Buscemi starts losing his his mind and shooting people, uh, his explanation is yes. there's a dramatic zoom onto his face, and he says he's got space dementia, and that is he's got space <laughs> dementia because yeah. that's a thing that happens. Oh my God. He's got space dementia is an actual line in this movie, and that is one of my major. I I've been oh. talking about this since we watched it, and no, that's one thing that so comes up. Many. There's so much, but he's got space dementia. It's just it's a, this it's a masterpiece. That one little line is just a masterpiece <laughs> yeah. of nonsense. Uh, well, it's it's lit- I would not say masterpiece, more like masturbation. Uh, maybe. <laughs> it it, it shows a misunderstanding of what dementia is, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's it's so good. It just it, he's got the, it lays bare the the logical okay. flaws of this film in only two words. Yeah, exactly. It's, so, it is, okay, it is, it is okay, this okay. movie in a nutshell. Yeah. Is he's got space yes, dementia. He's got yeah. space dementia. <laughs> you know, no. To me, you know what the this movie in a nutshell is is the scene. This is one of the scenes I have remembered from the first time I watched it. Is the scene with the freaking animal crackers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's this movie in a yeah. nutshell. Well, let's, it's obs. She goes. Yeah. Oh, you're so good at pillow talk, or something like that. <laughs> or you're so you have such great pillow talk, and, and it is he's bouncing a he's bouncing a gorilla animal cracker on her breast. Yeah. But with <laughs> by the way, yeah, two not the animals he's talking about. Yeah, which really bothered me. One of those is a freaking camel. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm. I'm pretty sure. Um, and it just really like I was like this that scene. I was like. If my PS3 remote weren't so far away, I'd fast forward. <laughs> well, you're right that, that uh, it is it, it, that is a symbol of the endemic problems of this film that Michael Bay wants well, us to care so deeply about these people, and we're just so indifferent, just, you know, to all yeah. of them. And and then just the way he goes about making them into people right. is just like I like the when she says, "Oh, you're so like I forget what she says." She says like, "Oh, you're." I can't remember you're, you're, either. I was... You're such like funny pillow talk or something like that. Which, by the way, is really stiff delivery. And then, like the entire thing is more like what some like person who doesn't know about human relationships. It's a, what an android would right. write as pillow. It's the talk Tommy Wiseau effect. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's it's, it's awful. It's it. Oh man, it killed me. That yeah. scene is the most painful to watch. Well, the one the one thing is we can talk about a whole bunch of other uh, scenes that encapsulate. We can just this talk movie about scenes <laughs> because because I think I think Ebert wrote this in his review. This is like a two hour long, a two and a half hour long uh, uh, trailer. trailer. I mean, any any thirty is, seconds yeah. of this, any thirty seconds of this movie could be a trailer because there's no cut that's over like ten seconds long. Right, <laughs> right. and and I almost feel like that's one of, going to what uh, Steven said that's kind of w- 
part of the reason it's in Criterion Collection because that 10 second cut style of filmmaking has become so yeah common it has become now. influential yeah. it has become common negatively so I think <laughs> but nonetheless <laughs> to a lot of detriment but yeah it is it is there um, so yeah uh, Armageddon is an influential film. I can give it that. <laughs> Reluctantly, we will all, <laughs> yeah, reluctant yeah, all accept it. You know, you know who else was influential? Hitler. Oh. <laughs> there, we've done it. Yep. Uh, we can end the podcast. <laughs> we've mentioned Hitler. We've hit, mentioned Hitler and Hudson Hawk in this podcast. We've hit all this of is our the, hallmarks. This is our. Yeah. This is our. Our. This is this is our podcast prime. <laughs> yeah. The greatest yes. one we've ever done. <laughs> I'm glad to have everything. been here for the, for yeah. the absolute peak. So we could probably just stop now. We probably don't need to do anymore. <laughs> well, um, but we will. Yeah, because we are dedicated so many, to the cause. You know, there are so many. There are so many problems with this movie. Uh, not just plot wise, science wise too. Obviously, that oh, goes without God. saying. That goes without saying. It was so painful. Yeah. Like yeah. even from a purely like amateur pro, um, perspective, it's just like even like. Just any college educated person starts going, Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen? Yeah, you know, but but for anything, you know, it still has its moments of truth. Gravity on Earth is is usually portrayed very realistically. So <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. This movie portrays gravity uh, on Earth so realistically sunrise, that it insists sunset. on doing so even on the space station. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well they turn on the gravity spin and I'm like and then, like, it's like, what? No, it's like, yeah. And then, like, so he should be able to walk on all the walls. Um, well, right, but his head is n- but, near the top wall and his feet are near the bottom wall. So if he is doing, right, he like, be ripped apart. Right, the Kubrickian style, like, you know. Uh, right, uh, he should be ripped into shreds. False gravity. Yeah, yeah, then his head should fall towards the, the top wall as his feet are pulled towards the bottom wall. It's yeah, weird. oh my god, he's going to be stretched. Yeah. Um, well, never mind the fact that he's been in, I believe they say, space for 11 months. Yeah. I think it was over that. I think it was 18. I think it... it was regardless. An, it was an unreasonable... Yeah, he should have time. no bones, Adam. <laughs> you should have bird bones at yeah. this point. Plenty of people spending... They should be completely Russians especially. The Russian space, space Agency especially keeps their astronauts in the Earth, in, in orbit for... For a long time, the long, we're just the longest. Yeah, we just sent up a guy who's expected days. to uh, be on the space station for over a year. So, hmm. okay, but know. here's my point, okay, and here's why, and this is totally not a major point, but it bothered me. He's been up there for like at least a year, okay? Yeah, which means his bones have been steadily demineralizing. Okay, then he goes and plays hero on an yeah. asteroid. His bones should have shattered. Maybe. Well, he does The only difference okay. here is that... He should be useless. Right, but he was also working under gravity conditions for at least a portion of that time, so... Yeah. Um, well, but it seems like he doesn't do that spin thing I know, very often. that's what it seemed like, so I don't really know. And uh, it's it weird. is. You know, one thing that really it's upset not me about I'm this It's not important. I'm sorry. It just bothered me. But for yeah. sure. That one thing that really bothered me is all of these times they would do both of these space, mis- space missions at the same time. Like, they launched two rockets to do this mission, and they launched them at the exact same time right next to each other. And, like, five yeah. feet yeah. apart yeah. from that's each other. That's crazy. Like, the booster rocket on one looks like it's going to slam into exactly. the other. I was like, that's not yeah. very And good if you planning. have one catastrophic failure, then both of them are going to be destroyed. And and that's true of every moment of this film. They dock both of them with the space station at the same time. They both try and navigate. Well, that they head into the asteroid. The same- exactly, yeah. it's crazy. Well, they nearly hit each other in the asteroid, right. and then well, they release their extra boosters, right. and they they slam into a asteroid like three feet away from them, right? And which blow explodes. Up. Yeah. It's like, oh, how was this a good plan? Right. Imagine if Why didn't you guys ditch that on the dark on the other side exactly. of the moon? Or Imagine something. if they'd miscalculated just slightly. They all would have blown up. And you know, this is just like the, the most logistically unsound plan. And you wanna be like, Well, it's the end of the world, they're rushing to put something together, but the fact of the matter is NASA and that department Watch them a half an hour apart. Yeah, yeah that department's yeah. still made up of geniuses, the smartest engineers on the planet. Uh, you know, even a even an out, a plan that takes two hours to come up with is going to be better than one that we can look at as three amateurs and say that's yeah. batshit crazy. You can't do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like as you watch booster rockets barely miss the second right. plane, you're like, hmm, 
We did not think this one through, did we, guys? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, Billy Bob Thornton. Is we, like we had all the time in the world to oh, do all this in math. <laughs> I would love that if if that happened. If they just blew, both blew up. Yeah. Right well, there. <laughs> that's the well, end of that. <laughs> we probably should have told the Russians about this sooner so that they could prep something in case we had a problem. Right. But I, uh, yeah, I like how they call it a joint space mission, but it's filled with nothing but Americans. Right. <laughs> All the Americans and then the one Russian right. guy. Well, and also, well, and he's an accident. We get we get the impression that um, they didn't even tell the rest of the world, even the other world governments, yeah. about this until. Paris blew, or until uh, I believe that city in Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah. that city yeah. in Asia. Yeah, Singapore, Shanghai. Right. I forget which yeah. one. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, everybody's like, "Oh my God, there's an asteroid the size of Texas coming at us! How did we not know?" <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And by that point, it's like just beyond the moon. So right. who? Well, okay, who and has by not the seen way, it? okay, here's another thing that really got me going right at the beginning. Okay, we have a million dollar budget for. Um, I don't know, outside Earth Yeah, looking at the sky. Right. Looking at the sky, yeah. And it's huge. Well, first of all, we have pretty much mapped every asteroid that's ever going to come anywhere yes. near us in the near future. Absolutely. Okay, But beyond that, okay, let's say that we missed this one because it's made out of stealth rock <laughs> or something weird, okay? Um, let's assume that's the case, okay? The astronauts who are working in space are hit by debris from when the asteroid passes through the field and they can't find the asteroid. Try pointing it in the direction <laughs> of... Where the debris came from. Where your astronauts were. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, I'm like, okay, you guys don't have enough to observe, but you certainly look where you're going to put people. Right. Yeah. So, like, like oh, we forgot to check. <laughs> if there was going to anything that was going to fly into our astronauts. And then after... Man. But then after they know about it, and they should be watching it specifically, the one that hits Paris still surprises them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the thing that upset me the most about this movie is, uh, uh, and it's in service of Michael Bay's vision of common people. Uh, with with you know good old Earth experience are better than engineers, right? This whole movie shows NASA engineers screwing up their job over and over, and like really smart people just not as smart portrayed as being not as smart as they actually are. And then all of a sudden you bring in this drill team, and they're smarter than any of these NASA people. Yeah, they're like oh, we gotta throw this out. We gotta we yeah, gotta, it's ridiculous. Get rid of these hoses and it's like the people at NASA no, already I'm thought sorry. Of, we are sending up only the weight that we can send up. If you remove stuff we chose specifically to keep it there it's crazy the whole thing of you know this salt of the earth kind of wisdom replacing logic and and science oh it's it's, mad well and it's and it's like these guys who have never ever been in a zero gravity environment are making decisions about like how we're gonna do it but then they then they he dismisses it with oh well our suits hold us to the ground so it doesn't matter but but both the nasa engineers and the drillers decided to keep the miniguns right 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 who's like but why were they on there in the first place i don't know pat i don't know it's 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 like the mars rover had a machine gun (laughs) on it they're like oh well do we know it's that Curiosity most, okay. doesn't have a machine gun? Though? Here's the deal, okay? We whipped this up real quick. The guy who drew it on the cocktail napkin had a machine gun on it. He was a little bit tipsy. <laughs> and we're like, we well, just, it's on the plans. It's it. on the plans. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, obviously, he put a he put a mini gun on there for a reason. Right. Right. Some NASA engineer sitting in a bar like, yeah, and then there's guns on it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well, exactly. That's what, in my mind, that's how it came to happen. Like, oh, this is never going to see production. Let's throw some mini guns on there. Hey, you know what would be awesome? How about a wet bar? <laughs> it's, just like, it's just inside of this rover is just absurd. There's like a disco ball, a wet bar. There's like a stripper pole in the back. Yeah, exactly. yes. it's like, what, what, what are we going to use that for? In case there's ladies, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. Use your brain. Space ladies. Space ladies. <laughs> It's got like a heart shape that <laughs> rotates. I hope so. I hope so. No, this is definitely important. We're not throwing this away. <laughs> yeah, right. Like this is all part of the weight limit problem. Okay. No, it's I. It, no, it's that. You're right. That whole like, oh, these guys know more than the NASA engineers thing is just yeah frustrating beyond belief. It's like it's insulting. They come in there, they tear this thing apart, yeah. and it's like. Okay, so you trust them to build the spaceship you're going to ride up in on. 
but you don't trust them to build the... Right. And then he's like, oh, you got the cams all screwed up. These guys are actual, honest-to-God engineers. Right. They don't yeah. mess up cam Absolutely. ratios, okay? That's not a thing that happens. That was, that was when I, I lost any trust for this movie to, like, make any sense to me, was when... Bruce Willis looked at this design and said, well, your engineers couldn't figure out how to put this engine together, or this drill together. They built a goddamn spaceship. I know. Absolutely <laughs> they did. They should, they, They've they done it more than once. They would certainly improve on Bruce Willis's design, not, uh, yeah, it's like, not, not know how to put exactly. it together. Exactly. Like, he should come in there and be surprised at how well they tweaked his exactly. design. Exactly. <laughs> Not the other way if around. If this movie had it's any relationship madness. with reality, that's what would have happened. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wow, <laughs> you guys did some weird stuff to this thing. Well, it has to work in zero gravity. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so we did we did some crazy shit to it. Yeah. Yes. Not like, oh, you guys screwed up the cam ratios, you're chewing up drill bits, huh, or something like that. And it's like, Bruce Willis, I love you and Hudson Hawk, but go just <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Oh, it's not his fault. Yeah. It's Michael Bay's fault. It, it's Michael. It is. I know it's not his fault, but he's the one who says it. Absolutely. He should have refused to say that line. Yeah. No, he didn't refuse to use that southern accent that he only half-heartedly uses. Oh, so. I know. Like I feel like that was thrust upon him. Maybe. Maybe well, Billy Bob's doing it. <laughs> Why can't you? <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's peer pressure. I'm betting Michael Bay actually said to him, hey, man, Billy Bob is doing this accent. You got to do it, man. It's so cool. (laughs) Yeah. No, yeah, it's it's peer pressure. He's like, well, I'll just put it in, but I won't inhale. (laughs) Maybe nobody will notice. (laughs) And then his daughter speaks fucking... Oh, sorry. I got too excited. Chinese. What? The daughter speaks Chinese? Well, she's the the front office. No. No. Everybody in this film is a genius for no reason. Right. Except for the NASA <laughs> engineers. It's really... Yes. Except for the Lord. NASA engineers and the guy with the plate in his head. Which I don't know that he has a plate in his head. They say there was brain trauma. But because he's in, he reminds me enough of Eddie from uh, Christmas Vacation, I assume he has a, pla- a plate in his head. <laughs> Basically, everybody else in the film is a genius. Yeah. Yes. Bruce Willis, genius. For no reason. Yeah. Well, he can ben look Affleck at a thing. Has some stuff. sort of weird tuition for oil genius. Oh wait, that is, also that, that might really explain one down. of my problems with the movie. If what? Ben Affleck has some sort of weird automatic intuition, that would explain how he got a uh, a his own oil company off the ground, drilled with three different <laughs> like three, three different days. drills <laughs> in like twelve hours. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not even three days. You're right. No. Um, well, because. <laughs> I do assume that that's part of his character because he tells Bruce Willis's character, who will be known as Bruce Willis's character, because I can't remember his name. Harry Stanton. Not, not Stanton, because that's Stanton, Harry Dean Stanford. Stanford or something like that. Yeah, Stanford. I remember uh, while he... we were watching, you were looking up Harry, <laughs> Harry Dean Stanton pictures, and you're like, oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what? Um, he tells Harry... That the reason he drilled in the middle of the night without permission is because he had a hunch, and sure enough, they strike oil. Yeah, the hunch was of correct. Course, yeah, the hunch was correct. He, he There's... did not. He used a drill that had some gobbledygook mechanical problem that was poorly explained. <laughs> something about yeah. some sort of valve or yeah. something. It basically just like insert mechanical horse shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like um, that started a fire somehow. Um, which I think still requires a spark or some sort of heat source, but I wouldn't worry too uh, much. Not in this, this world. This was Armageddon. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. The heat source is Michael Bay's vision. Um, <laughs> but no, they they. Um, so his hunch is correct, which is yeah, how he starts an oil company in an hour and a half. Yeah, and like already orders <laughs> custom printed take... signs and everything. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like in the time it takes to get from, which by the way is like. It seems like they're off the coast of Asia somewhere, 
which means he's got a 14-hour flight or something around That's there. That's true. Okay? <laughs> so in the process of his 14-hour flight, he leaves him about three hours to start a company. Right. Well, and, yeah. and the FBI is going around, uh, presumably <clears throat> around America, hunting these guys. And Michael Bay seems very uninterested in the fact that it would take time to get all of these FBI guys to all of these different locations. And so if you watch... It would, the take, ticking, time, it would take these guys time to get there in the... Right, front, exactly. The, the real guys, like, they're out, like, riding motorcycles, like... Did they literally get off the plane and not even do anything? Just hop on a right, motorcycle? Right, someone on a motorcycle waiting for them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like, what? And he's getting a tattoo? It's like, you you, it, you just got off a plane. Right. You're not even taking a nap. Minutes ago. Yeah. Michael Bay had no, has no conception for how time is supposed to work in these movies. And that that's true yeah. on a macro scale in that, you know, like, we know we only have 17 days and yet, like, a month's worth of action happens. But it's true on the micro oh, scale. Easily, more than yeah, a month. But it's true on the micro scale in that these action sequences, so much stuff happens over the course of like three seconds that should take about two minutes. And Michael Bay is like, no, just throw it all in there. It'll be fine. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, everything that we. Well, and then like, and it really ends up making some of the characters seem like frantic in their action. Mm-hmm. Because um, um, Steve Buscemi's character, right? Yeah. Goes from riding a nuclear missile to shooting a minigun in 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 movie time, minute and a half. Yeah. Like, I know he's supposed to be crazy, right? But like, that means he literally ran from one to the other. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like he literally got done riding the nuclear warhead and then ran out of the thing. Is like, you know what I'm gonna go do? I'm going to go find a minigun right. and shoot it at And me. next on my agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? And then after it's that, a, I've got this and this. They're all on my bucket list. Very busy. And his, and his, he is very busy. He's an MIT graduate, according to his backstory. <laughs> I know, because he's another freaking genius for no right, reason. Guys, I've, I've yeah. got a challenge for you. He's got okay. two doctorates. Here's, here's my challenge for you, guys. This, we'll call this the, the Armageddon character quiz. Uh, name... One other character from this film, by their name in the film, aside from Mary Dean Stanton, <laughs> <laughs> Henry, whatever. Just name any other character. Bear. Uh, Bear. Bear. Michael Paul Duncan's character, oh. Bear. Okay. All right. <laughs> I did uh, it. You I win did the it. challenge, because um, I could not come up with any. <laughs> yeah. Crap. Other than that. I forgot. Oh, and I, I certainly don't know Wilson's his real character's name. name. I don't know his character. We certainly don't know the name of the president. We don't know the name oh, of the we're head never of told. NASA. <laughs> no, everybody is referred to by their title for the is most the president, part. Does the president even have a name? Maybe not. He is referred to as the president. Yeah. Got this movie. Yeah. I'm almost certain of what that. shambles. <laughs> so, there you go. Well, that was the... What's Billy Bob Thornton's yeah. character's name? I have name? no idea. Liv Tyler's it's, character's I think it's name. Just, I they, call him, they call him Truman. I assume Truman's his last name. I, get, I just kept... Because I kept thinking be whether or not it was he was supposed to be a descendant of the president or oh, something. I see. <laughs> um, and Ben Affleck's first name is AJ. <sighs> yes. I, I wouldn't. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, AJ. And yeah. then Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam Stafford. clearly wins it, this game because I, I don't. I didn't. I, I forgot all of these character listen, names. I can, um, I'm beyond I that. Can't. I couldn't. I couldn't say Liv Tyler's character's yeah. name. I couldn't. Obviously, the president. No. Um, the Russian. Yeah. I think no Liv Tyler's name is. No, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't even... I'm, I'm, I think yeah, that's indicative the, the number two guys. of how little this movie makes yeah, us care. Yeah, it is. We were supposed to care about these characters, but we can't even remember their names. Right, Wait, right. we remember yeah. Truman because he might have been related to another famous Truman. Remember Harry... We remember Bear because, because it's the only memorable name. <laughs> right. We co- remember Harry Stamp because I thought it was Harry Stanton, the actor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we remember Bear because it's Michael Paul Duncan, so of course his nickname is Bear. We, we remember uh, AJ because yeah. there was a sign that said AJ's Drilling or whatever at one point. <laughs> yes. And frankly, Ben Affleck looks like an he kind of does. Yeah. I'll go with that. If somebody told, showed me a picture of him and said, this guy's name is AJ, I'd be like, yeah, okay. I'll buy that. Hopefully. Sure. <laughs> I'll buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, the movie's plot shambles. Movie soundtrack. Dear Lord. Yeah. Characters we've established also. Nothing. Yeah. Ciphers. No. There's... Visual effects are about the only... Yeah. Like all Michael Bay films. Right. The visual effects are about the only worthwhile element in this right. movie. Right. Well, and, and even they are rough because they've got become dated right. at this point. Well, and Adam and I noticed this. There's this uh, 
when when things are actually happening in NASA at the very beginning of the film where they're trying to figure out what's going on, Adam and I both noticed this scene that's very cool. I'm sure you noticed it too, Pat, that uh, there's this scene where the camera sort of uh, goes around in an arc around this NASA briefing room. And it's actually kind of elegant uh, and effective. If there was anything interesting happening in that scene, it would be considered like one of the better sort of like ex- expository sequences in an action film. I mean, it, you know, with the camera, it's one camera motion. It's not frenetic. It just floats around the room and establishes the, the spatial relationships of each element in the room to each other. It's a very effective little yeah. thing. And it's, uh, it's the only one in the movie where I can actually say the restraint that was used uh, made it a very <laughs> effective little moment. Uh, and Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't usually say restraint in general but yeah like i agree he it's It's weird little moments like adam was saying there's trailer elements that you're like oh that's a cool yeah exactly (laughs) but then they open their mouths or (laughs) then the next scene comes along and it's batshit insane like yeah Yeah. it's just again at that at that at that starting part the stuff happening in nasa and 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 steven said this a lot while we were watching it the stuff happening in nasa and the stuff happening with the drillers feel like two separate movies at that point um and the nasa movie is actually okay it's not it's great it's passable yeah. but it's passable <laughs> yeah but all of the all of all of the things happening with harry and his drill team uh they're just bad and i think it might just be because there's more dialogue on that right. end I think, yeah, that's definitely one of the major, major weak points of this film is that any time a character opens his or her mouth, they're saying something wish they stupid. Had <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, like, it's yeah. It, when those two scenes are going right. on, the drilling and the NASA stuff, uh, the NASA stuff, they're talking about, like, you know, the size of the asteroid and where it came from and all that stuff. And, and that's all stuff that we've heard in other action movies or we've heard in high school science classes or whatever it is. But then in the drilling side, like, well, this valve is not connected to the pressure gasket of the whatever, you know, like, yeah, and, and we don't yeah, know anything we, about that one movie. World. Yeah, we have we have something that we basically studied when we learned about dinosaurs, and then we have the most dangerous game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, you know, I mean, it's, and then we almost we very firmly establish the characters within that first couple minutes as completely unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like, no one's behavior is anything but something that like you might read in a poorly written story. Yeah. Like you have the dad and none of them even fit together properly. Okay. Like it's a bunch of puzzle pieces with edges that don't match that a very angry and not very, a very uh, temperamental child named Michael Bay shoved <laughs> together because he didn't want to actually build the puzzle properly. Yeah. Hit it with a hammer until they fit. <laughs> yeah. Make it's, I mean fit. like we've got, we've got Harry is super protective of a daughter who refers to him as Harry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hyper protective. While simultaneously he is apparently taking on the role of father for the woman or for the man that she is sleeping with. This sends him into a blind murderous rage. Okay. Yeah. That is not very blind murderous rage. It's more like premeditated murder for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so we're faced with the fact that he feels like a father to this man that he is now hunting with a gun right. while simultaneously is hyper pro- and is doing it because he is hyper protective of the womb of the girl that calls him Harry right. and they are, have a very cool relationship. But anyway, simultaneously we introduce bear who is trying to give Ben Affleck character a head start on an oil rig. It's an oil rig. Okay, so we we introduced that he is trying to look out for Ben Affleck's character, but we don't know. I guess everybody believes that Harry will shoot him, but doesn't believe that Harry will shoot him. Yeah, no one's because, really, like, no one's trying to grab the gun. Right. right, like he's about to murder somebody, and nobody's trying to stop him. Yeah. I- Okay, they, well maybe, they try to talk him down, yeah. but no one's... But they're not running in fear of the murderous rampager yeah. either. It seems, well, he's not mad at them. It seems like Michael Bay's intention... No, but I know, but the man is killing people. Yeah, it seems like Michael Bay's intention is to establish that, you know, uh, Harry is, is wild and rough, but he knows what he's doing, and he has a heart of gold underneath all of it, right? And, yeah. and Right, but he's 
shoots the he gun. He does, and he ends up actually and, which means he doesn't have half, a like at one point too. Right, which means it, and is not remorseful, and which means he does not have a heart. Exactly. Of heart. So whatever Michael Bay which thinks is, he's doing with that yeah. scene, he does none of it. I mean, it's just this block of nothing uh, that's sitting at the front of more blocks of nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it it sets up the characters, yeah, in just a way that you're like at the end, you're like, who? Are these people? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How how have they ever worked together? You think, you yeah. think that like the moment where uh, Liv Tyler grabs Harry Dean Stanton's hand when they're hearing that the world is going to end soon, uh, you'd think we're supposed to all be like, oh, you know, they, they love each other, whatever. But that's, you know, it feels like nothing because they've kind of already established that he's super protective of her. And then, you know, that they, whatever status quo that is established at that moment is, is the same as when the movie ends. So. Right, was where, yeah, like you said at the beginning, yeah, like, nobody changes. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. the exact same characters they went in. Yeah, so S- any of this... Steve Buscemi character is slightly more crazy than he was right. before. Right, so any of this work I guess that that's Michael Bay growth. thinks he's doing, uh, is it's not, he's not actually doing any work. He's just sort of treading his wheels and blowing stuff up while he's doing it. So. Yeah. Good news, though, we... Um, I forgot what I, no, I forgot my good news. I had good news, but it was wrong. It's gone now. Oh, okay. Never mind. Good oh, news. Yeah, we I never have to watch this again. Is that you don't want to miss a thing? Oh right. Yeah. I don't want to close my eyes. Which 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 was on the radio continuously for like two years after the show. Sure well, it won a. Uh, it won something. Best song. What was it's it? MTV awful Music Awful song. Probably. MTV Movie Awards. It won Best Movie Song. Um, is there is there any is chance? Is there song. any chance this is in the Criteria Collection because of that song? Because that is. I thought about it for a bit. <laughs> um, I was like, "Oh, was it's huge. their magnum yeah. opus." <laughs> Michael Bay won the Saturn Award for Best Director. I uh, know it's the this the movie. awards this movie won and was nominated yeah. for make me want to throw up. Yeah. yeah, and it won the Saturn Award for Best Sci- Science Fiction Film. When it was it was up against Dark, you know, Dark City is oh, is man. an actually brilliant great. science fiction film. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it, like the fact that it was even nominated for Saturn Awards upsets me. Yeah, yeah. it it co won with Dark City, by the way, um, up against yeah. Deep Impact, Lost in Space, Star Trek Insurrection, which shouldn't have made the list no matter what else came out that yeah. year, <laughs> and the X Files. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I mean, of those movies, there's a chance I would say uh, uh, Armageddon is certainly the the biggest uh, and has certainly had the most impact uh, culturally. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but it, I have a question um, for you. Oh wait, we the, the account- oh go ahead. He, he won Best Director. I I, I wouldn't agree with this either. Um, other movies that he was up against on the Best Actor for. Uh, Robert Bowman for The X-Files, Roland Emmerich for Godzilla, Alex Proyas for Dark City, Brian Singer for App Poople, and Peter Weir for The Truman oh, Show. Man. I think the directing in The Truman Show was significantly oh, yeah. more worthwhile than, than this. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry, Pat, I interrupted you. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I forgot <laughs> what I was going to say. It's not really super important. No, I it had something to do with... Well, I mean, just looking at the Academy Award nominations is... He didn't win, thank yeah. God. <laughs> but uh, it still doesn't mean that like they he should have ever they should have been nominated. Yeah. I mean, luckily there's no director or story yeah. related or acting related things on there. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, it's, but it's like sound editing, visual effects, original song, and mixing. Sound there's mixing. a chance those are all the things yeah. that this movie is good at. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Including, yeah. including, say Which what is, you will about uh, "Don't Want to Miss a Thing," but uh, it is it is uh, catchy. It 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 needles oh, its way in your brain, even if you don't like yeah, it. I know. <laughs> no, it's it a good does. pop song. It really is. <laughs> so yeah, at sound mixing, sound editing, visual effects, and "Don't Want to yeah, Miss a and, Thing" and, are the things that are best about this movie. <laughs> yeah, I I I don't know what it was up against with best visual effects, but I'm actually kind of surprised it didn't. Yeah. Work. Because it would have been the highest budget, right, of that time. Yeah, for sure. Oh, never mind. Huh? Wait. I don't know. Oh, okay, no, it was 1998. I was like, oh my god, it was up against 
uh, The Matrix. No wonder it didn't. No, it was up against What no. Dreams May Come. And uh, so I'm kind of glad it didn't win. What Dreams May <laughs> Come won Best Visual Effects. All yeah. Right. It's got good I'll visual effects. Yeah. Cool. They're, yeah. they're certainly prettier than Armageddon. That's yeah, certainly true. It's certainly a much more pleasant experience to watch. Uh, yeah, watch like, I mean, it's not <laughs> nearly... It's not so much rock flying through space. Yeah. Right, um, the asteroid in this movie looked like like something out of Transformers. I mean, it, like, with all those, like, tendrils Yeah, there's off smoke, yeah. it's green at times. Yeah, and my science is great. gravity. You know, because I... My, I my degrees in uh, chemistry and physics way back when so my science brain was like well you know there could be you know uh, ice that's sort of uh uh vaporizing uh you know uh it, in the in the air as it's getting closer to the sun or whatever but then like that doesn't justify tendrils of green and blue and purple stuff flying it doesn't make any sense the whole thing is very strange yeah so there was one more science question that i never bothered to find the answer to so our Asteroids flying at 22,000 miles per hour, mm-hmm. which seems sort of slow for an asteroid. Um, but throw in that the, it say, they say at the beginning that it has, what, how many days do we start out uh, with? 18, like 18, I think. 18 yeah. days, right? So it covers that ground, right? And who knows? So we know roughly how far it's traveled, yeah. okay? We catch up with it when it's rounding the moon, okay? Now, the problem I have with it is if they launch space shells from the from the Earth, in theory, they should meet at roughly the halfway point between each other at, with relative speeds. That means that that space shell is probably traveling at 44,000 miles per hour. Right. It is going very fast. Well, it gets... It, 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 it gets to the I'm, space station in like five minutes, right? So, right. And, and so and what I'm saying is, is that like... Mathematically speaking, for it to meet at the moon, yeah. Remember how long it took us to get to the moon last time? Right, a couple of we days. We do it in four hours. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, and, and 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 we're talking about a thing where we have not increased the speeds we can go. Right, we're really. still using, we're still using chemical, ro- or we're still using chemical rockets right. here. Right, we we have a maximum possible speed. Well. Right, and even crazier, you know, like, the, the speed that the, the shuttle reaches leaving the atmosphere is kind of the max speed it's going to get up to. So the idea that, right. it would, that it would stop at the space station and be able to get back up to those maximum speeds again, launching from a space station, is also kind yeah, of crazy. Yeah, right, yeah. There's just a lot of little elements of this that just don't add up to a whole. Adam, you quoted that, that, uh, that figure um, that NASA shows this to their... Oh, yeah. Yeah, NASA NASA shows this to uh, prospective uh, management. And they show it in their management training program. And uh, everyone's asked to just find as many scientific inaccuracies as they can. And they've uh, their numbers are 168 uh, oh, possible wow. things yeah. that happen. I, I want movie. this list. I need to read I this kind of list. Want to see this yeah. list too. And it also seems like that might be like, well, sound in space, for instance. Uh, happens yeah. throughout oh, the yeah. film, so that counts as one mistake that has tainted the credibility of this <laughs> film throughout the whole thing. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> what you're saying about, oh, well, about yeah. I mean, catching up the, to the rock and like uh, they, the fact that it goes by the moon and doesn't seem to alter either the course of the moon or its own course. The whole thing is just very bonkers. Yeah, and like I mean, it did, that one just bothered me because I don't know when I started even like. I felt like suddenly I was involved in a, like, a train leaves the station, right. you know, in Baltimore <laughs> at this time, and another train leaves Cleveland at this time, yeah. and this, they're traveling at these relative mm-hmm. speeds, and I'm like, but the train from Cleveland gets all the way to Baltimore before the train from Baltimore leaves the station. Basically. Even though they yeah. left at the same time, traveling at radically different speeds. Right. I mean, the, the bottom line is that this magic. movie... It's just pure magic. Yeah, this movie does not stand up to deeper analysis or critical thought on any front, and at all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's... that. Maybe that's why it's in the Criterion <laughs> Collection. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pure... It's, as a shining brainless. example of what not to shoot Yeah, exactly. For. <laughs> oh, maybe, man. maybe. Uh, well, um... I want to uh, I want to say two things. Um, 
because I think we're kind of we're kind of drawing down here. Uh, I was unfair to his freshman uh, teacher because I've looked up who she is. Her name is Janine Bassinger, and uh, she's a film historian and the curator of the cinema archives at Wesleyan University. And uh, her her film she's credited with with starting Wesleyan's film studies program, um, and it's produced Akiva Goldsman, Josh Whedon. Uh, Lawrence Mark, Alex Kurtzman, uh, all kinds all right. of, all kinds of people, and Michael yeah, Bay. and it's, um, it's understandable, but at the same time, but, but at the same time, very her, wrong. Her defense of <laughs> Michael Bay is still very, very wrong. But to just call her his his freshman film studies teacher is is, is, is underselling her. Right. Yeah, is this underselling her. This is a factual her correction. We still think she's yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's still wrong. She's yeah. just a much smarter lady who's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my my favorite character in the entire movie, if I had to boil it down to, gets one line, and it's the the NASA uh, NASA um, psychologist who's played by Udo Kier, who yeah, Pat, yeah. Pat will yeah, remember yeah. as as yes. Doctor Frankenstein one and Dracula, one of my favorite actors in Flesh for Frankenstein <laughs> and Blood for Dracula, and he's he's amazing in those movies. So he's pretty amazing in this movie, <laughs> and he's not bad in this one either. Yeah. Just let ridiculously it out. great actor. Oh, um, do we really have? No, my, yeah. Oh, it's a toss up between <laughs> him and um, the one NASA engineer with the solar sails. Yes, I love his acting. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the few people, him and Udo Kier, who actually like really sell their part. Yeah. Is he the one that kind of looks like, uh, kind of looks like Philip Seymour Hoffman in Capote? Um, I don't the guy with the glasses like. and like the whiskey blonde hair. I think hair. he is the one who ends All up. All I know is that he uh, turning on he NASA goes, to try and help the guys. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. The the one who hacks. Yeah, goes, we land. It, the delivery is beautiful. It's like yeah. w- he's channeling <laughs> William Shatner. It's wonderful. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I, I think it's because he's, he's he plays well that he's really unsure of his idea, but everyone's unsure of their ideas. So yeah. right, and it's it's a throw out every possible yeah. idea yeah. at the time. My my favorite character is the uh, uh, giraffe animal character that Ben Affleck calls. <laughs> yeah, <animal. laughs> right. Yeah, the yeah. Animal crackers in yeah. general really give solid performances. Yeah, they are. No, they, they sell were, their part yeah, real well. Yeah. Notice, notice how all no, of our okay, favorite also characters like are ones that woman, have barely any lines. Yeah, I like the woman that Steve Buscemi's talking to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forget the actress's the name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the one who just got married. Yeah, yeah. I remember her name. I did. She's, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I don't remember her name. You don't yeah, remember her name, I know you who remember she is. her. I, know, yeah. I know who she is. is what I mean. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, thank you for joining us, well, Stephen. It was delightful. Yes, you did a wonderful and, uh, job. Well, feel, free to, so feel free to pop in at any other time. I know it's, yes. it involves getting up early on Saturdays, which is never <laughs> anyone's like favorite thing to do. Um, well, they do don't it. have to come for the entire set of yeah. films. They can just yeah. come for the last yeah. one. Just if you guys are ever doing more science fiction, uh, I'm glad to do it. I wrote for, for io9 for a while as a sci-fi writer. So. Yeah, I, I, I totally should have actually mentioned that at the beginning. Oh, well. You really but, uh, should have. <laughs> yeah. I um, would have made him way more credible than <laughs> well, my roommate. <laughs> right. I, I, if your audience makes it all the way to the end of this discussion, uh, oh, I'll put it. I'll put it in the. I'll put it in the description on the on the iTunes feed. Cool. So, <laughs> but, I'm glad uh, to be here. Yes, thank you very a lot much. Of fun. Thank you very thank much. You so much for having me. It was fun. Uh, next week, uh, next episode, we are watching uh, Henry V, Lawrence Olivier's Henry V, um, which will be very different from this movie. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yes, completely Shakespeare different. and Lawrence Both, Olivier. Yeah. I still hope there's yeah. an asteroid in it, though. <laughs> I think that's one of the changes he made. Um, okay, good. Right. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next time. Yeah, see you next Bye. time. Bye. Bye.
You've been listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriteria at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.